Hello, my name is Dr. John Sapola. I teach saxophone and clarinet at Western Kentucky University, and this is the Allstate solo for alto saxophone. And uh, this is marked at uh, eighth note equals 80. So some of the thoughts about this piece are, uh, of course, it's a lyrical piece. It's slow. It's supposed to demonstrate a beautiful tone quality, uh, an even sense of rhythm. But with that underlying sense of even pulse, you want to uh, be able to express some phrasing. So maybe pushing the phrase ahead a little bit or pulling back at the ends of phrases. Uh, generally speaking, at the ends of phrases, you want to do a nice taper of notes so that you really feel like you've made a statement that ends and that a new statement begins. Uh, the trills are uh, slow enough here, uh, in, in other words, the rhythms that the trills are over, uh, are st even with an eighth note, are slow enough for us to be able to start the trill slowly and speed up a little bit. For instance, so I, I hold the first note just a little longer. Um, we also have uh, a turn here, which is basically uh, over a group of 16th notes, and it's over the E-flat, so we're going to play the E-flat, play one note above, F, back to your E-flat, play a D. And the way I like to fit these turns in is to first to play the fundamental rhythm. After that, we have a trill with some grace notes. And so the way I like to approach these is to take those out and just play the fundamental rhythm again. And then add one of those in at a time. So let's add the trill in first. should be always be going up to the, the next note in the key signature. In this case, it's a trill from an E flat, and so the next would be an F. And what I like to do here is just trill the middle finger like this. You could trill all three bottom fingers like this, but if you can have the coordination to trill, just trill this finger, it might sound a little cleaner. And that's what I'm finding is easier for me to do as well. Uh, after you practice your trill and are able to keep it in rhythm using your metronome a lot, then take the trill away and just practice the grace notes. And then, once you feel comfortable with that, try to put them together. Now, there's a dot over the trill, uh, the E flats. I, I am basically ignoring that. <laughs> um, I guess it could mean a number of things. Uh, it could mean a short trill. But uh, if it meant a short trill literally, we'd probably have a different symbol written over it, a mordant, which is kind of a squiggly line over the top, which would mean maybe one or two alternations. So in this case, what I'm always striving for is musicality and, and uh, clear phrasing and, and musicianship. So um, with trills and grace notes, uh, which are characteristic of 19th century music, um, we uh, I, I want to make this sound as graceful as possible, so 
Uh, my goal is to outline the phrase and just have these uh, ornaments just be that, just ornaments and not uh, sticking out. Um, I think overall another very effective thing you can do is use some subtle vibrato. And the way I play vibrato on the saxophone is my lower lip, I keep my jaw essentially stable and I say wah, 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 but with breath. I keep always a good amount of air down below. And once this fills up down here, this will fill up. And then as I expel my air, this is a very slight motion here. The jaw might be moving very, very slightly. But it's really essentially a lip motion. Um, one of the important things about vibrato is that if you are playing with a reasonable amount of pressure on your uh, mouthpiece, re on your reed, then you won't have, uh, you won't be biting. And if you're doing that, then vibrato will be easy because you can uh, lower the pitch and bring it back up to what its, its standard level is. If you're playing with too much pressure, it, the vibrato probably will sound a little tight. And so uh, some good exercises to do are, are possibly to put on a, a rhythm, like on a metronome, a steady pulse and then maybe play eighth notes and triplets and sixteenths. And that gives you a chance to have some measured vibrato. And then after it's measured and it's controlled, then you can apply it to the music and do maybe as an opera singer might, and not have it so measured, but just kind of go uh, a little bit by ear. I hope that's helpful, and I wish you all the best of luck. And please stay in touch with me if you have any questions. Send me a Facebook message or an uh, uh, email at Western Kentucky University. Thank you.